They were cruel. They would just slaughter your characters. And you have to start over. Oh well. That was part of the game. So, just right. Hey, Mike, arms up and get juice again? I don't think so. Maybe we should still say what? What? Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. Hokey smokes. I meant to have a second uh, video done yesterday, but after therapy, I wasn't feeling bad, but things were a jumble up here. And as the day went by, they didn't get better. And then when I did try and push to record something, the game went and bugged out and it just, everything became pointless and my mood became even more volatile. So yesterday was wonderful, especially when I went and ate some pastries made of, of course, wheat, and then fell into a gluten coma because I fall asleep after eating stuff with gluten in it because of my gluten intolerance. Yesterday was not a really wonderful day. It wasn't terrible and then nothing awful happened, but because of these little minor things here and there, oh joy. And of course, front-loading of videos. Hey, if you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be very awesome as well. If you could leave me a comment, that'd be very, very cool. And I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally awesome and literally beautiful people are, in fact, literally awesome and literally beautiful. They help me out immeasurably. Without their help, I would be hosed like a literal Christmas monkey. And that is no way to be hosed. So thank you, each and every one of my patrons. These are good people, and if you would like to become a good person, there are links to my Patreon in the video description. And if you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, there are links to a PayPal. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money at all, there are links to an Amazon wish link with stuff like cat food on it. So thumbs up for that. And front loading of videos over. Thumbs up. <laughs> huh. Yeah, and so it's really warm here too. I hope he smokes. I got up at 5.30. It's warm upstairs. It is warm. And I've had my fan on high. I had the fan in the hall on high with the door open. I've got the door shut, the fan off, the lights on. I am burning up. So joy. A lot of that is also just perception on how hot I am because I'm moving, I'm doing stuff, I'm waving my arms around and I heat up quickly. So part of it's of course my own fault, but all the other stuff doesn't help. I mean, I got my PlayStation on, I've got two monitors on, I've got my sound system thing on, I've got a light over there, I've got a light up there. So, and then there's me, I'm a hundred degree furnace in a room that is largely shut off now because I got the door closed and the fan off. Yeah, there's a lot of heat producers in here. <laughs> Thumbs up. So past that though, I've just been trying to survive. I talked a lot with my therapist yesterday. We talked about the stuff that I'm worried about with uh, the whole country stuff going on. We talked about other things and this, that, and just try to get through it, survival mode, do what I can. And that's good. So it was a good talk. It's just my head was all in a mess afterward, which you pull stuff up. And if, you know, therapy is about talking about things and you have to pull stuff up to talk about it. It doesn't all get resolved in one session. So stuff gets pulled up and then it's there until you can finish talking about it, which may be a week later. So there's stuff. Ah, joy. Still though, life is life. I survived and I went walkies last night and I survived that and it was good. So a definite thumbs up. I did lots of, well, I wouldn't say lots, but I did as much creative thinking as I could while I was out on walkies. And that's a very good thing. Definitely a thumbs up on that. My fingers, of course, are really hurting. So I gotta try and crack them. Because while it hurts to crack the knuckles, it, it also hurts worse if I don't because the pain goes like this and then I crack them and then they drop down to here for a pain level. So if, uh, if I can live with that spike that brings it from there to there, that's worth it. Hurts like hell to get it done though, but oh, joy. Hey, at least I'm alive so far. <sighs> I was watching a video this morning 
on looking on my topics list. I laughed out loud, which is why I I don't stand a chance on the video platform with any of the stuff that I do and make because there's a billion billion people out there. I appreciate absolutely every single person that watches anything that I do. Thumbs up and thank you. It's just there I there are so many people, of course, I don't stand out in the crowd. Nobody can unless you've really got that special something. And a lot of people got that a lot more than I do. I'm not good at thinking on my feet, unfortunately. But I was watching, and I can't even script to end as much as I would like to, but I was watching a Let's Play sort of thing about a oh, almost 20-year-old game. No, it's a Call of Duty game. And the guy was doing this bang, 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 shooting at the bad guys thing in World War II. And it's like, oh, lay down suppressive fire. Lay down depressive fire. Your family never loved you, Germans. And it was like, oh, laughed out loud at that because it's funny. You know, so I wish I could do stuff like that, but I'm, I can't script. I can write, but I can't script. So, joy. Still, though, life is life. Been doing what I can, and that's all that any of us can do. Let's see. I also, in a comment from Jesse Koskinen asking about, is there only one life in the game uh, arena, the Elder Scrolls arena? And it's like, yeah, they are brutal and harsh, and that if you only make one save and you make a mistake, you may have to start the whole game over. Back in the day, they were cruel. I started playing games in, you know, the, like 1982 when I got an, a Commodore 64. One of the first games that I bought was a, something called The Bard's Tale. And those games are brutal, brutal. You make up six characters to run through, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six characters that start off and you go outside and the first combat you get into likely will kill all six of your characters. So you got to start over from scratch again. You go through that process for hours. You walk out with your six characters, get into your first combat, and you hope that one of them will survive. And then that person, you bring back to safety, make up five other characters, but that one's got a little bit of experience. So if you can keep them alive through the next couple fights, they can go up a level and then they'll be harder to kill. And so you spend literally hours trying to make up a party that would survive just the first couple combats. They were brutal that way. There is a series called Wizardry that started off with just wireframe dungeons. Just the line in front of you for the corridor that you could see, a square in front, and then stacks of icons for the bad guys you were fighting. They were cruel. They would just slaughter your characters. And you have to start over. Oh well. That was part of the game, was trying to survive it. That's way too brutal. I'm glad they don't do that anymore. They remastered the Bard's Tale trilogy and I actually got that a few years back. And it's good. It's still brutal, but they've quality of life did. And it's not as brutal, which is good because no one in the modern day would play it otherwise. Unless you really like that sort of thing and are willing to uh, be beaten with baseball bats while you check out the games. They're worth it if you can live with it. But yeah, they were cruel that way. Luckily, the games like Arena, you can save any time you want. Problem being, if you only have one save, you can hose yourself. There's one dungeon, the starting dungeon you go into. <clears throat> And it's far enough away from civilization that if you get poisoned, not poisoned, diseased by attacking rats, you might not survive the ride back to civilization to get help for your disease. I had a save like that on my latest Let's Play. I had to roll back to a previous save. If you didn't have a previous save, you only had one save slot, 
start the whole game over. Because you caught a disease that you can't survive. Oh boy! <laughs> the absolute cruelty of the ancient games. But thumbs up for that. Past that is stated, I have just been trying to survive. I've watched the videos, I've played some games, I've tried thinking creatively as I can. I went for walkies last night to Walmart and back. I watched some stuff when I got back. So, it's been good. Definitely a thumbs up on that. And if I take a look on the list here, there is some stuff that I did want to talk about with cryptid stuff and all that the creative part of the setting of the well it's all creative but the cryptid part of the inside outside razors and stuff because i was thinking a lot on the department and also the cryptid stuff is a little bit different and yet kind of the same from the other settings and that it is energy that is pouring out through doors and it is just collecting on the earth and because it is present everybody who has genes that might be activated by the presence of this energy may have it expressed and they become a cryptid but there are also other types of cryptids that just are natural they exist and they just reproduce and go but we never run into them out here, kinda sorta. So, if you put a, a put it into kind of game terms, if you gamify it and put it into terms that, you know, if you have a cryptid sense of less, less than 50, the only interaction you can have with cryptid stuff, unless you are chosen as a victim by a cryptid, is that you will feel have feelings of dread or horror when you are around a lot of cryptid stuff the lower your cryptid sense the less you will feel of that sort of thing when you pass that threshold you click into you can interact and see and deal with cryptid stuff directly the horror is gone that just snaps off and you can deal with cryptid stuff as if it were just non-cryptid stuff. You see cryptid things everywhere that there are cryptids. As your cryptid sense gets more powerful, you get to see more things and interact with greater and stranger stuff. Until, if you have a cryptid sense of, in game terms, 90 or better, you can choose to, like, grab the lever and yank it from normal to cryptid. Now, what happens in everybody's, everybody in this setting, the inside, outside, razor's edge with cryptid stuff, there's extra universal chromosomes from extra universal energy that poured into this universe at its moment of creation within this multiverse in the cosmic horror framework. <sighs> Let's try and remember where I was. Boy, I love having ADHD. Okay, so all this energy comes in. People have these genes that can activate. And if they do activate, then you can become a cryptid or you can see cryptid stuff. Or you can interact with cryptid things. And if it's strong enough, you can. I'm sorry I'm repeating this, but oh, I'm also trying to get my brain back on track. You can grab the needle and pull it in this direction. Because of the extra universal part of your brain, you are literally shutting down all perception in the normal part of your body. You are no longer paying attention to any sensual input of normal stuff. Now, in a way, you are there, but you're also not to normal people anymore. Just like <clears throat> when the universe enters the, the void, the Ongata, and it all matter collapses, in, well, evaporates into energy, all energy falls into its lowest rest state, there is no more potential for change, there's no more way in, there's no more way out. It's still present, it still exists, but nothing can interact with it, so it's not there. 
because you are no longer interacting with normal stuff, you are no way in, no way out. You don't exist down here where people see things in the normal place. And now you're only using your 90 plus cryptid senses. Welcome to cryptid world. Like the inside and the razor's edge. On the inside, there are like a thousand square kilometers squashed into every square kilometer of space. There's a lot more there, there. On the razor's edge, there's like a million kilometers all squashed into every square meter. Cryptid world, with your cryptid senses and all this cryptid things out there from the cryptid energy, they're about a hundred miles scrunched into every square mile. It is a big, big world filled with things like herds of dinosaurs, tribes of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, other things like that. This is where we get the sightings of all these things from because they exist on our world. It is our world but you can't perceive it unless you have a strong enough cryptid sense. So when you enter cryptid world, it's a mighty large place filled with mighty odd stuff. And of course, that's where we get all of our sightings from, from the uh, things like that, you know, the, the occasional, you know, well, <sighs> try and come up with the name of it, Loch Ness Monster, Nessie. Well, that's just sightings of something that's come from cryptid world. All the various, most of the various types of Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yetis, Abominable Snowmen, cryptid world. They've just left their perception area and come into ours for a short time. So thumbs up, and I've been working on that. Hopefully I'll be able to come up with greater uh, descriptions of it so it doesn't sound so rough but I'm going to have my creativity continue chewing on it to find out exactly what where how so thumbs up on that and continuing to check my list over there tomorrow hopefully I'm going to talk more about the Department of Government Resources and how the Dunning field affects everybody in the world oh boy but until then I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank however many people, and it's not many, who have left me comments in the past 24 hours. Again, not many, but you know what? Anything more than zero is awesome. So thank you very, very much. Greatly appreciate it. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even knock out in American Sign Language, well, you've already seen how my brain worked. Forgot what I was talking about as I was talking about it. Joy. So we have Jesse Koskinen, thumbs up and good to see you. We have George Ofora Ati, thumbs up and thank you. J A Y, greatly appreciated. And yes, survival mode is what you have to do if you have to do it. So no fear and glad to hear that you're doing okay. Uh, good doing okay and that you're going into survival mode to survive. That's okay. We have Eric Snow, thumbs up. There is Tommy Copeland, greatly appreciated and thumbs up. <laughs> Lawrence GT, greatly appreciated. Chris Allen, thumbs up and thank you very much. We have Ben B, Hokey Smokes, and thank you very much for the very kind words. And it's good to see you in the comments. Adrian, thumbs up and thank you very, very much. And that is it. Nine people who left me comments in the past 24 hours for a very short time. You got me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. So thumbs up and thank you. Well, hey, it's Friday. <laughs> for I day is I'm recording this and I'm still got some phone calls I'm gonna try and get done or at least some online chat with some people that will help me out that'll be a good thing and having mentioned survival mode survival mode is fine make it through the day that's what is important and hope he smokes of course while things are potentially better Things are still dangerous out there in the world. Just be appropriately smart. Take appropriate precautions for your area. I only wear a mask when I go into places where there are groups of people. And that's fine. Just maintain your social, maintain your social isolation. 
only if it's appropriate. Use a mask when it's appropriate. Just be smart, which includes getting vaxxed and getting boosted. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.